I've got something really cool for you today. This little magic box right here. This is a Wi-Fi enabled amplifier that will let you connect any speaker to your home network for whole house audio. This is the Arlick A30 Plus. If you're not familiar with Arlick, well, you should be. They've got a full range of Wi-Fi enabled products, including DIY amplifier kits and things like this cool plate amplifier. So let's unbox this thing and see what's going on. Inside the box, we've got an owner's manual and they ship it with an RCA to 3.5 millimeter adapter. This is for your auxiliary input. It also comes with this really nice beefy power supply. And what's really interesting about this is this is a four amp power supply. And so if you know how electricity works, this power supply is capable of delivering 72 watts. That's four amps multiplied by 18 volts. And that's really good news because most of these little amplifiers like this that I've tested, they don't ship with a power supply that's big enough to deliver enough juice to hit its rated amplifier power. This thing is rated two by 30 watts, so that's 60 watts total. Now, whether or not it'll actually do two by 30 watts, 60 watts total will depend entirely on how efficient the amplifier is. Hang on just a minute and we'll put it to the test. We're going to find out if it can do its rated power. Inside the box, you got two antenna. There's a Wi-Fi antenna. Obviously, you need a Wi-Fi antenna for a Wi-Fi amplifier. And there's a Bluetooth antenna because it does have Bluetooth connectivity. There is a speaker connector. This is what's known as a Phoenix style connector. You plug the speaker wires in here, you tighten them down with these set screws, and then you insert the entire thing into the back of the amplifier. There's also a remote control so you don't have to grab your phone every time you wanna make an adjustment to the stereo. There were no batteries in the remote, so I'll have to run into the house and grab some batteries before I can do anything else. Then there's the amplifier itself. It has this kind of brushed aluminum look to it. I like the front, it has this dark panel, and sometimes you can kind of see the Arlick logo peeking out of it. I want to thank my patrons, especially $25 patrons, Dylan, Bo, and Baba. Has a nice clean look, small and subdued, which is what I like. It doesn't stand out. No one wants to look at your amplifier. They want to hear your speakers. On the back of the unit, of course, it has your power connector, the connection for the Phoenix connector. There is an auxiliary input as well as two USB input. There's also a LAN port. You can plug in RJ45 and wire this to your home network. There's a reset button. That's the only button on the entire device. And of course, a spot to screw in your two antenna. Now, before you connect this thing to the internet, you do want to plug in some speakers. It'll make some beeps and boops and stuff like that to indicate that it's ready for pairing. Now, there is a right and wrong way to make the connections on these Phoenix connectors. You may not know that. I went ahead and connected them the wrong way so that I could show you how not to do it. Yes, you can connect them wrong and if you do, it won't make any sound. You'll need to grab your phone and install an app on your phone. The app is called for stream. Follow the prompts to connect to the device. I'll show you how to make the connections in a little bit. We got something we want to show you first though. Once connected to the amplifier, you've got a menu of streaming services that you can use to stream directly to the amplifier. And of course, if you've got multiple of these in your house, you can stream the exact same thing to all of them at the exact same time. There are a couple of important ones that are missing. There's no Apple Music on this list and there's no YouTube Music. YouTube Music is what Google's calling their music players. But you can also download songs to your phone and play songs from your phone directly to these devices. So I'm gonna take an old phone because new phones don't have aux jacks and plug this old phone into the device and set up the AMM1 handheld amp dyno here. What I've got is a DD1 Plus and an AMM1. There's two things we're looking for here. We're looking for the light on the DD1 Plus. That lights up at 1% total harmonic distortion. And then the light on the AMM1 lights up at clipping. Now, before we go and crank it all the way up, let's talk about what our expectations are as far as the power this thing might be able to put out. The first thing you need to remember is that the chips in these little amplifiers aren't rated based on their output power. They have a thermal rating. They're rated on the amount of heat they generate. So the power ratings on devices like this are a lot different than what you'd expect in say a car amplifier virtually none of them are gonna make their rated power, again, because that's a thermal rating. So if this thing will give you 20 or 25 watts, I think that's kind of a realistic number. Let's crank it up and see what we actually do get. Okay, that's, uh, that's all the way up and that's 13 watts. And what you're gonna notice is we never hit distortion or clipping. 
So something else is going on here. We need to investigate a little bit. Let's try it again with the oscilloscope hooked up. Okay, that's really good because with the scope hooked up, we got a nice clean wave. We still got the same result, only 13 watts. And I'm really happy to see that nice clean wave because a lot of these little class D amplifiers will have some interference from their high frequency switching and you'll see it on the wave. So there's only one thing left to consider here and that is I might not have enough input voltage to drive the amplifier, which means the cell phone probably isn't putting out enough voltage for this amplifier to hit its peak output. And that's just something you need to be aware of whenever you're dealing with an amplifier with multiple inputs. You might get different amounts of power depending on what you're using as an input. So let's switch it over to Bluetooth and crank it up and see what we get. Bam, 26 watts into a four ohm load. Now you'll notice that it's actually reading a 3.8 ohm load, which is really interesting. So I was really worried about letting the uh, magic smoke out of this nice little amplifier, but it held up just fine. So I'm gonna give that a thumbs up to Arlick for building a nice durable machine that can actually handle this amp dyno test. And of course it didn't make the rated 30 watts of power, but that's okay because no amplifier like this ever does. Getting 26 out of 30 is actually pretty good for this particular market. Now let's see how this thing sounds. It's a good little amplifier. I strongly recommend that you check Arillic out. And the thing to remember, the thing that makes it really special, the magic inside is the Wi-Fi connection. If you're only ever gonna use the Bluetooth connection, there are cheaper Bluetooth amplifiers out there on the marketplace. But if you wanna control any speaker in your house from any room in your house, and if you wanna pipe the same music throughout your entire home, I don't think there's anything on the market that'll beat the Airlick devices. My advice is to not buy one, but to buy several, because where it really shines is when you've got multiple devices throughout your entire house. To see the setup process, check out these videos right here. And if you enjoy this type of content, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next adventure.